Hello, it is I, Art for me once again. Don't you change the channel on your television. Are you even watching on television? Anyway, do not change your internet page. Keep watching. Welcome to a new and exciting season for Flutie TV. As you can see, we're gonna rock the art world with this new set that we have created by Rock Fouch with the Magic Craftsman Gallery. It's all handcrafted concrete and we're really excited. We have a new studio that we built specifically for the production of Flutie TV and it's gonna be an awesome season. So we look forward to that. We've got two exciting guests today with our Surrealist special. Uh, our first guest today is Mitchell Pluto, and Mitchell Pluto resides from Montana, and hi Mitch, how are you? Yeah, thank you very much. Mitch, we met probably about a year ago yes. uh, over at Magic Craftsman Gallery, you're a friend of Rock's, and I was really excited to see your work. There's just a, a tremendous draw, I mean, you, there's so much to look at. Uh, we were talking a little bit about the, the style and you is it primitive surrealism is that what you would uh, signify the you know is that what you would call your work I would call it primitive surrealism uh -huh. it, it really investigates a, a kind of the original surrealism which I believe is has to do with a part of the brain that is anima, animistic and um, so I try to put that in my artwork as much as possible. And a lot of my artwork is uh, automatic, mm -hmm. um, which means that I'm really uh, interested in investing a lot of time in the interference of what's going on in my uh, unconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I work that way. Well, so when you're painting a painting, is it does it develop as you're painting it, or do you see it in your mind before you start? Well, that's a good question because traditionally, you the artist's will is that they want the the image that they imagine. Uh -huh. um, with automatic painting, um, you're dowsing for an image, mm -hmm. and that's primarily what what happens during that experience. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we've had on a previous show, you did a video uh, for our Where's Art segment yes. uh, that was done in Montana. Very well produced, by the way. Uh, you did an excellent job. Thank we didn't you. have any hand in any of the video production. That was completely done by you. Thank you. Um, but uh, there seems to be a lot of the nature of Montana in your work. Is that, do you find inspiration uh, in Montana? Is Ab absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm definitely a romantic. Um, my wife might not think that I am, but <laughs> I enjoy nature and peak experiences and um, it certainly helps to encourage uh, a lot of inspiration. So how prolific? I mean, you paint uh, daily? Yes. Yes, I do. I work in oils primarily. Um, I also do acrylic. Um, but that gives me a lot of time to work on different things. Uh -huh. um, all, you know, a couple of paintings at a time. Now I've seen nature paintings, you know, I've seen with buffalo. Uh, yes. Uh, and uh, other, other, you know, uh, wildlife paintings. Yep. But then also I've seen you do some figurative work as well. Yes. Well, I, I do really enjoy going out into inner space mm -hmm. um, a lot, but I also do like to do conventional things. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, well, you know, it's it goes back and forth. Now, I think I read somewhere, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I read that you started out more representational in your artwork. What's What's your background? How did you kind of find your way to surrealism well after after school i headed towards taos new mexico and that certainly um changed a lot of my perspective mm -hmm. um so that was a really big influence in my life um and i met my wife there and then we traveled to montana uh -huh. and so it's been back and forth but primarily i enjoyed the experimental part of my 
mind. Okay. You know? So some it's, of those earlier paintings, are they still, I mean, were, were you a professional artist at that time? Were you selling those paintings? Um, I, I have had my art in the uh, Taos Meets Taos shows. Uh -huh. um, so I was, I was definitely always working with art. Um, it wasn't until uh, living in Montana that I started doing it more and more. Okay. All right. Well, I've seen your work at The Hatch here yes. in uh, Spokane Valley. I've seen your work at uh, Magic Craftsman. And, of course, you're a flutie artist, and so yes. uh, you've got your work. And uh, one of the pieces had you know, several thousand views on it, which was quite exciting. Yes. So, um, but uh, other ga so in, in Taos, you were part of uh, the... Uh, Taos Meets Taos. Taos Meets Taos. Yes. Other gallery representation? Um, a lot of little bohemian coffee houses, uh -huh, um, uh -huh. you know, because people, you know, bohemian counterculture people generally like surrealism. Okay. Well, we've got a couple of paintings to share with our viewing audience today. One of them on the monitor is this first one right here. And uh, you, the, what's the title of that now? Cosmic Chemist. Cosmic Chemist. And this is this would be a good example of an automatic painting mm -hmm. <clears throat> because it deals a lot with the interference because I, I really didn't have a clear cut um, goal in mind. I just sort of almost like an ink blot. Mm. Um, that's sort of what was going on, and I just sort of developed things as I went along. Well, you know what I find interesting about your work is that I mean. You know, and a lot of times you, when you look at a painting, sometimes in other paintings you can look at it and pretty much get it right away. Yeah. But when I look at your work, it takes a lot of time to really invest yourself into it and study it. And I seem to always find something that I didn't see previously. There are a lot of stories in yeah. there. And that is sort of what I want to do that that's that's exactly the experience that I want is that maybe years down the road you saw something that you didn't see before. didn't see before okay a little surprise exactly okay well we've got a second painting and what's the title of this one this deals with uh, echolation um, and that's deals with uh, bats usually but this is an owl and I think that there's a potential in the human mind to uh, see shapes without really seeing them uh -huh. by radar. So that, that sort of dealt with more of the owl um, having that kind of ability that maybe um, it's latent in mankind too. Hmm. I love it when the paintings tell a story like that. Now, do you ever, do you like for your viewers to uh, seek the story or do you ever publish the story with the painting? Um, no, I rather it be a mutual thing going on. I mean, I painted the story and I want the viewer to be part of the experience and, and do and do that. Um, so that's that's important. Okay. Well, we are very excited to have you here today. Um, we will take a little break right here okay. and we'll be right back with our next guest, Mr. Rock Fouch. Mesdames et messieurs, it is I, art for me. I am out and about. Where could I be? Could you guess? Am I over here? Am I over there? Where could I possibly be? Who knows? Maybe you do. Uh, my name is Ildiko Kolapac, I'm a visual artist and also a folk dancer and uh, I've been working for the last 20-22 years on uh, different artworks, mixed media artworks to three-dimensional um, which focus on cultural identity, environmental issues um, and somehow I incorporate into that some body language I learned through uh, psychology and also dance. I'm from Hungary and I came to the US in 1987 when Hungary was still a socialist country before the Soviet Union fell apart and the Russian army left Hungary. My inspiration is really uh, how rich uh, different cultures are 
especially non-Western cultures, including language or images, patterns, uh, folk outfits, um, uh, all of these really show the immense uh, richness of our uh, of our cultures and, and what's on the earth. And um, I think I, it's very important that Western cultures really learn more about those cultures and maybe try to understand them, especially the languages. In today's world, sustainability and reusable resources are always in the news. Many business models have adopted these principles in their everyday practices. But not in color me crazy art supplies! We do not let trivial things that may go away after we are gone get in our way! Who wants to paint that watercolor painting on paper that may have been on a roll in somebody's bathroom? In fact, we only use the best paper derived from the most select hardwoods in the Amazon rainforest. No amount of eco-sacrifice is too great to support our customers. Our paintbrushes are made from only the best Lipizzan stallion horsehair from that area of the horse. And who wants paint made from cheap synthetic colors? We use real color by distilling the color from the rare Colombian Zuzu bird feathers. This paint is guaranteed to make your paintings fly off the easel. Our modeling clay comes from the delicate floor in a remote Indonesian cave. Come join our pottery classes where you can create anything your sweetheart desires. At Color Me Crazy Art Supplies, we spare no expense nor ecological sacrifice to bring you the most profitable, <coughs> I mean quality, art supply products available in the world today. At Color Me Crazy Art Supplies, our motto is the world needs to do its part for you to make great art. Welcome back to Flutie TV. It must be said that the opinions of our advertisers are not necessarily adopted by Flutie TV. Our next guest today is Mr. Rock Fouch. Welcome, Rock. How are you doing, Dean? Doing really good. Good to see you. My friend? Rock, as owner of the Magic Craftsman Gallery and the designer of our wonderful, beautiful, uh, new set furniture. I wanted to personally thank you on Flutie TV. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. You know, as, a, as an art collector, uh, you know, I've got a lot of paintings and a lot of, you know, bronze works and everything else, but I never ever dreamed that as a collector I'd be sitting on my art collection. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, it's wonderful. I mean, it's so creative and imaginative, and, and we're very excited to make this a part of our TV show. So thank you very much. And you know, when I first saw the chairs, I thought, hmm, are they going to be comfortable? And they are absolutely amazing. You just sit in there, and it just kind of forms around your body, and, and uh, they're extremely comfortable. Uh Concrete is an interesting material, and I've been re very fortunate to kind of develop ways of using it that I can make it do pretty much anything I can imagine. And uh, from time to time, I have pretty good imagination. Yeah, boy, and I've <laughs> seen that firsthand. You know, you've, uh, along with this, uh, you create, you know, I, I'll use the terminology Disney like. Uh, caricatures and, and living trees and things like that out of concrete and so your artistic skills are, are uh, very broad brush we'll say. 
Well, I think that, you know, I, I have been fortunate to be able to use a number of different mediums and like anything, I, I try to learn and understand exactly how everything goes together and works. And uh, it's given me the opportunity to work in concrete and clay and plaster and fiberglass and um, you know not every idea presents itself well as just a painting uh-huh you know and uh, I, there is something about me maybe it's the schizophrenic part of me or something <laughs> that you know it, I, I can't just paint all the time uh-huh I'd get bored so I have to break it up with a little three-dimensional uh, concrete and clay type stuff and then back and forth and they seem to feed each other uh -huh. uh, the different sides of the brain that I, I work out of. Well you, I've seen your artistic uh, abilities utilized in a commercial aspect in you know in high-end homes and things of that nature uh, from the concrete end as well as the the artistic you know sculpture type works. Uh, but I've seen a lot of your artists very functional. I mean, you've got the uh, everything from clocks to uh, you know other items that are their functional type art. Now we'll get in and we'll show some of your surrealist paintings, which are absolutely amazing. But uh, do you have a favorite? I mean, uh, is there a favorite medium that you prefer working in, or is it just kind of all? I think my favorite is all of them. <laughs> you know, all it just, of the above? Yeah, it just depends on <laughs> it just depends on the idea and uh -huh. I mean um, you know I could paint like, like I did the seven and a half foot tall dragon and I mean I could paint that and that would be relatively nice and but it doesn't have the same feel as when you have you can go up and you can touch the scales and mm -hmm. the wings and you know the, you just can't present it the same way. Right. So, I, my, my mind kind of works both ways. So, I had asked Mitch this question earlier. When you're working on a piece of art, do you already have it in your mind what you want to complete, or is it a work in process? You start it and then uh, it develops as you go? Uh, for a long time, I, you know, probably most of my life it, as a painter I I would do all the preliminary work with sketches and everything and build the painting that way so I mean it was very uh, uh, intentional mm -hmm. and over the last number of years uh, you know my friendship with Mitchell and uh, you know other artists uh, like Shala Rosa and some of these people they you know really we talk about the real roots of where surrealism came from and there is a certain amount of that that is automatic and so one of the paintings that we're going to look at is actually entirely spontaneous and automatic mm -hmm. and uh, so again that schizophrenic theme seems to apply to my painting as well as everything else I do. Well let's talk about that painting that would be uh, uh which, which one of the, we got two paintings today, the, the first one uh, there is... The Machinations of Mythology uh -huh. is entirely uh, a spontaneous painting and the way I, the way that painting came about is I just took the canvas and threw several liquid colors of paint and threw it on the canvas and let it swirl around and do its thing and then I just set it back let it dry and uh -huh. then when I came back to it I'll s sit and look at it and I start seeing things in it and then I just start pulling those images out and uh, you know with each new image it changes the whole painting and you see other things oh, Wow! and what's amazing to me is that you know with going at it completely blind like that when I'm done I, I stand back and I can see a complete theme to uh, what the painting is, and most often it's something uh, very deeply connected to who I am. And you know, I've seen that in your work. There's a lot of, you know, when I study your paintings, there seems to be 
uh, an overriding theme. And much like when we were discussing uh, Mitch's paintings, there's so much to look at. I mean, I can, I can come back to your paintings time and time again and see things that I didn't see there before. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's always this, uh, you know, there's a story to, that, that comes out of the painting. So that, that's exciting. Now we have a second painting there and I want to point out uh, there's, a, there's a, a feature to this painting that seems to be somewhat of a reoccurring feature in your work. <laughs> and that is the brain camel. What's the name of this? This painting is called uh, Transitory Intellect. Uh -huh. And that, you know, I probably should name it the birth of my camel um, <laughs> because that's where he first came into my uh, consciousness. Um, his re the real meaning behind him is pretty much ego. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, and I don't think ego is such a great thing. I think it's probably one of the most devastating things to the planet and uh, the other species that we share the planet with, as well as to ourselves. And uh, it's been interesting because it, the camel has really kind of taken off a life of his own. And uh, I, he's found his way into many paintings. and. Whenever you have an art show, there seems to be a brain camel sitting out there uh, leading customers <laughs> to the gallery. So I, I think that it's a, it's a wonderful piece. It is an interesting uh, thing. Every, every now and then you drive by my gallery and it's in a kind of an industrial uh, blue collar community where a surreal gallery is just the fact that a surreal gallery is in the place, is in, in the neighborhood, is uh, about as surreal as it gets. Um, but you drive by and you'll see my brain camels uh, out in front. Uh, they, they're spotted all over town. People take my uh, representations and use them for all different purposes. And it, kind of amusing to me. It, the attraction, I don't know what that is. Well, I think uh, I think people can connect with it. It's, it's, it's good. You know, along with your artistic skills, along with the Magic Craftsman Gallery uh, uh, relationship with great artists like Mitch and Paula and others, uh, you're also a community leader and you've uh, uh, helped start uh, The Hatch. And I know that that's kind of a cooperative. Uh, maybe you can describe a little bit of uh, what's going on with the hatch. The the hatch uh, originally came from the idea of, I mean, there's a lot of people out there uh, trying to figure out how to make a living as an artist. And uh, we wanted to create a uh, business incubator for artists and musicians. And uh, in the process, we're building kind of a community of artists. Um, Spokane's always has been a kind of a depressed art market for a lot of years. And I think there's been way too much competition amongst the artists. And, and everybody kind of drove each other away from it. And my thought is that, no, we need to create a brotherhood amongst all of us because none of us can compete with any one of us, you know. And we all, working together, we can accomplish so much more, mm -hmm. you know, especially in letting our community know the real value of art in, in our lives, you know, and how important that is and, and how that affects, you know, your quality of life. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's wonderful to be associated with great artists like you and also to uh, participate. I've been to a number of shows at the Hatch and I've met a lot of artists there and I just wanted to personally thank you for your involvement with that. wanted to thank both of you for your time today on Flutie TV. It's exciting to have you here and be a part of our Surrealist special. <laughs> <laughs> and so thank you very much and folks thank you for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you very soon.